Hello, welcome back to module 9 of setting up a journal in OJS 3.3. This is unit 5, announcements. Announcements are temporary content that will appear on your journal's homepage. They are great for content such as opening and closing of submission requests for special issues, event announcements, and other exciting changes happening in your journal. To post an announcement, we begin on our website's main page and access the dashboard through the top right corner of the page. In the left-hand navigation bar, we'll go to the website settings. If we go to the second tab, Setup, we can see that we have already covered information, languages, and navigation in the last units. Now, we're going to work in the fourth tab of this section, Announcements. The first thing that we have to do is to enable announcements. To do this, we'll just click on the box. This will display a new form where we can set up our announcements preferences. Enabling announcements creates a new page that contains the archived announcements and only the most recent ones will appear on your homepage. If you have any information about announcements that you would like to have displayed on your announcement page, such as, for example, information on who to contact with questions, you can enter it into the introduction box. Then, we can choose how many announcements do we want to display on the homepage. If we don't want to display any announcements, we can leave this empty. For this example, we'll set one. Once we're satisfied with the changes, we can click on Save. Doing this has created a new option on our left navigation bar. Right after the Issues link, we can now find the link to Announcements. Clicking on it will take us to the list of all the announcements published in our journal. If you'd like to add index and control to your announcements, you can use the Announcement Type feature to create type classes. Let's go to the Announcement Types tab. Here, we can create new announcement types by clicking on the button on the right corner of the box. Doing this, we'll open a pop-up window where we can set the announcement type's name. Once we're ready, we can save. And now our new announcement type will be featured on the list. If we want to edit this announcement type, we can click on the little blue triangle to show the options Edit and Remove. If we want to create a new announcement, we can go to the Announcements tab and then click on the Add Announcement button. This will pop up a new window where we can set up our announcement. First, we'll need a title for our announcement. After that, we can add in a short description. This is the content that will appear with the title on your main page and on your archived announcements page. Then, we can fill in the full text of our announcement. This will only be visible after the reader clicks on the announcement. The short description will not appear in the description text after a reader clicks through. The idea is that the short description is a summary of the full description, providing a brief overview while the full description provides the same information in greater detail. If you want an announcement to be posted for a limited time, you can go to the expiry date and set an end date for the announcement. Once that end date is reached, the announcement will automatically disappear. To keep an announcement indefinitely, you can just leave this blank. After that, you can select what kind of announcement this is 
by selecting the announcement type that we had previously created. You also have the option to send an email about this announcement to all the registered users of your journal. Once we've finished setting up our announcement, we can click on Save. Now you can see our new announcement appears on the list. You can view it, edit it, and delete it. If you have reached a large number of announcements, you can also use the search bar to find a specific announcement. Now, let's go to our homepage. First, we notice that Announcements has been added to the top navigation bar of our website. And we can see that the announcement displays underneath our permanent content. The part of the announcement that we see is the short description, the title, and the date. We can see the full description of the announcement. Now let's go to the Announcements page. The active announcements are displayed from most recent to least recent, and they are listed with their titles and brief descriptions. If we click through the full description, we can see that the brief description is not included on the page we are redirected to. This is why it is important to make sure that all vital information is repeated in both descriptions. And with that, we conclude Unit 5 of Module 9. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next unit.